Kenya's finance bill 2023 continues to elicit mixed reactions as President Ruto tables his first budget. CNBC Africa had a discussion on this. Here's more. Among the wins that I see is the um, uh, VAT, um, you know, uh, exemption for liquefied petroleum gas. So that was at 8%. And now, now the proposal is to exempt the liquefied petroleum gas from... Um, from VAT. Then there are a couple of other wins in terms of excise duty um, for guys who perhaps used uh, data and airtime for the telephone, then that uh, excise duty is reducing from 20% to 15%. Um, also for banks, that excise duty is also reducing um, from the 20% to 15% excise duty that would apply on fees that banks would charge. Um, uh, uh, taxpayers. So just to mention that a few of those, I think, are, are two clear wins that come out for, for taxpayers. Great. Bernard, what do you think are the wins for taxpayers <coughs> in this uh, proposed bill? Okay, thank you, Tessie. Uh, I can say that um, one of the biggest achievements that the finance bill proposes to introduce is what we call tax amnesty. Uh, how tax amnesty works is that the bill proposes to remove the application of the tax waivers and at the same time proposes to introduce the tax amnesty. Now, what the bill proposes is that if you have any penalties and interest that you had uh, and you have already paid the principal tax by 31st December 2022, the bill process proposes to give you 100% tax amnesty in terms of penalties and interest. That means, for example, if you had a, a penalty and interest worth 20 million Kenya shillings and you have already paid the principal tax, that means the government will, will give you 100% waivers in terms of penalties and interest. But at the same time, we need to appreciate that as much as the government is actually introducing tax amnesty, they have proposed to remove the provision which allows taxpayers to apply for the waiver application. So that's one of the biggest achievements the, to the business community and to the individual. Another achievement is about reduction of uh, tax on rental income. Uh, it has actually been reduced from 10% to 7.5%. So that means it is to bring more landlords to the tax net. And a lot of people would be willing to appreciate and actually go and decide to pay this tax on rent, which will now be 7.5 instead of 10%. Another achievement is about excess duty, just like what my colleague has mentioned. Uh, we have been having issues with the act, the way it has been worded last year. And uh, the finance bill currently proposes to kind of exempt the local manufacturer plastics of certain codes from excess duty. So that's another achievement for the local manufacturers and also to promote manufacturing in Kenya. So those are just a few achievements we can mention. Thank yes, you, Tessie. Bernard. And, and just going back to you, Alex, I want you to talk about the inflation adjustment that has been uh, brought into this whole mix. Do you think, uh, what will it do to as far as predictability is concerned? Uh, it's quite a welcome move, uh, especially for accessible products, uh, you know, the beers, the spirits, uh, water, you know, things like those. Because what used to happen is that uh, with every finance bill, uh, you'd find um, some rates that was being increased by the Kenya Revenue Authority for those accessible uh, goods. And then you also had um, the commissioner then having power to actually uh, and then adjust uh, those excess duty rates due to inflation. So as you know, inflation is not something that you can actually plan your businesses around. Um, so, and it's also, as a business person, you're not sure how to then uh, plan your business um, to factor in things like uh, excess duty, which would change every year, every time, two times in a year sometimes. So it's a good move to remove that uh, annual excess duty inflation. Uh, so that at least businesses now can be certain that uh, within a certain period, the excess rate uh, will remain fixed. 
Indeed, that is a win for businesses. And Bernard, coming to you, talk to me about the turnover tax. And some feel that it is not; uh, it was not really well thought out. What are your uh, thoughts on this? The turnover tax. Uh, when you look at the provision of the turnover tax, maybe we can give a, a, a background of the turnover tax. The when you are under the regime of turnover tax, we call it TOT. It means that uh, you have to pay 1%, 1% in terms of gross sales, which is actually the final tax. So when the government, when the bill proposes to introduce a further from 1% to 3%, we also need to understand they have actually reduced the threshold from 500 Kenya shillings to 15 million Kenya shillings. And, uh, how I look at it is that the government wants to target people from the informal sector, uh, people from the Juakali sector, at least to embrace the culture of paying tax by introducing the 3% and actually reducing the threshold between 500 to 15 million. For me, I can say it's a welcome move. And uh, as much as people are saying it's not, uh, it's not a good thing, we all need to understand that uh, we need to pay taxes. And uh, everyone doing business in Kenya needs to pay tax at least to contribute to the kitty in terms of revenue to the government. So for me, I'll say it's a welcome move that the government, as much as they have increased to 3%, they have actually reduced the threshold from 500 to 15 million Kenya shillings. And actually it's a final tax, meaning you're not supposed to be keeping records in terms of expenses. You just be paying 3% of your gross sales, and that is a final tax, meaning you're not going to be subjected to a further taxation. So to me, it's a welcome move. A welcome move. All right. Now, for this next question, I'd like to hear um, uh, from both of you, uh, both of you, Alex and Bernard. Let's talk about people's pay slips, especially those who are, in, uh, you know, above uh, half a million, that 35 percent. Um, really, how many people are in this bracket? And are we really going to achieve anything with this tax? I want to hear both your thoughts. Alex, let's begin with you. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting move and uh, it sparked a lot of debate uh, within the country. Um, in terms of your question, how many people are in this bracket? I'd, I think it's a very, very few, uh, you know, um, you can say group of people who are in this particular bracket of income tax. But what the care is looking at is looking at these are people who we already know are earning this money. So they already have the information. So it's an easy win for them to just increase the tax rate and net the same people and require them to pay more taxes. So it's not like they go look for these people again. So it's an easy route for KRA to just collect more taxes. But is it a good move? Uh, it's been coming because uh, if you look at our income tax bill, um, one that people have been discussing and hoping that it will come and perhaps change all the uh, our provisions in the Income Tax Act, there was a proposal to tax high income earners earning from 750000 that higher income tax uh, rate. So it's been coming and now it's uh, finally here with us. Um, so while it may not be something that will be welcomed by those who will be affected, uh, it's been uh, on the way and it's just an easy way for Kerry to get the money. Alex, I like the way you're saying for those who will be affected, it means you're not in that in that bracket. <laughs> but let me hear from you, Bernard. What what are your thoughts on this tax? Okay, my thoughts are that, uh, of course, when you look at the and how this how the government looks at it, the, about the principles of taxation is that it has to be fair. So I'm trying to look at is that if you're going to demand that people are going to get salary of worth 500,000 and above to pay 35%. Are we actually trying to be fair to the people earning that 500,000 and above and bringing down and, and the people earning less than 500 are not supposed to pay it? Of course, the government knows that these are middle people who earn 500,000 and above, and even if they introduce 35%, no one can go to the street and start demo, uh, start uh, saying that uh, you are overtaxing at because these are people that are earning 500,000 and above. So. The, the government seems to be betting on us and seeing that, um, yes, a lot of people that actually can start crying and saying this is a lot of taxes are not people who are earning 500,000 and above. So for me, I say, yes, the government wants to add more revenue, but I am not sure whether our um, 
National Assembly will actually pass it because majority of them are being affected. And that means any money that they're going to receive in their pocket is going to be less 5%. So for example, if you're earning 1 million, that means 5% of 1 million, which is around 50,000, they're not happy to spend it. And maybe that is the 50,000 they might be using to support the people from the constituency level. So for me, I could say it's not a good move. And uh, we hope that the parliament will not pass this bill to actually to, to 35% because it's not fair to the people earning 500,000 and above. Right, I hear you. Um, Alex, the other uh, tax that I'd like us to look at is the housing fund deduction at uh, 3%. And some feel that this should not be forced, that uh, you know people should do it voluntarily. What are your thoughts? And for me, I agree with the people who are saying it shouldn't be forced. It shouldn't be forced on you. Um, for one, uh, first, it is a budget for employers, which they didn't have. So you are contributing 3% for the salary of each employee that you have. So it's a significant cost. While you're looking at it as 3% is actually a lot of money. Then for the employee, um, deducting again 3% and contributing to the fund, it means it's an extra uh, place to spend, but you hadn't even planned for it. You, you have other things, perhaps you're even in loans. Um, and then the government is saying we actually want to prioritize 3% of your money to go to a housing fund. And to make matters worse, woe unto you if you're not eligible for affordable housing, because then your contributions will just continue uh, going to the government and you can only get out after seven years or after retirement. And if you get out, the government again is looking at you to actually penalize you more and tax this amount um, that you're getting out of the fund. Uh, so there are conditions there. You either uh, take this money to a retirement scheme or to your spouse or to your children, but it, the minute you say you want it in cash, they tax you again. Um, and I, I wish things were working as they, you know, as, as they ought to work, because if the houses are ready and you can clearly say that they're in a good place, you actually want to purchase these houses, then good enough. Um, participate, uh, work with the government to get to, to the house that you want. But the houses are not yet, are not yet there. So um, even though the government says it will work on with these funds to prepare the houses, will they be to a standard that you would like? Will they be in a place that you would like? So there are quite a number of questions around these um, contributions. And uh, I agree, it, it shouldn't be mandatory. Indeed, uh, those concerns that you've raised there of double taxation, uh, taxation as far as this particular tax is concerned. But now coming to you, there is an industry that uh, also feels a pinch, and that is the betting and gaming industry. And many are asking, you know, mm -hmm. will this uh, industry stand as far as all these taxes are concerned? What will be the fate of this industry? Uh, thanks. Uh, you know, in Kenya, there's a lot of uh, betting actually going on. And um, a lot of uh, companies are actually generating billions and billions of Kenya shillings in terms of revenue. So when the government wants to widen the definition of the word winnings and maybe to increase taxes on betting, for me, I see the government have seen that this is a cash cow for the government to generate more revenue. Because in Kenya, the practicability is that majority of the Kenyans will try to bet in order to see whether they can become few millionaires. And by them doing that, the government wants to collect more revenue. So to me, I'll say the bill proposed to increase tax, and despite the bill proposed to increase tax, I can assure you that Kenya will still continue to bet, and the government will still continue to get more, more revenue. So for me, I'll say it's a good move for the government to collect more revenue, and I, I can see they're going to achieve it, because a lot of people in Kenya actually wants to bet in order to win those Jackpots. Clearly, we'll still continue to keep a strong focus on the finance bill, even as Kenya prepares to table its fiscal budget for the year 2023-2024.